It's Thursday when you guys will be listening to this, the day of the trade deadline. Hopefully no moves have happened before I publish this, because as of right now, Jeremy Grant is still Detroit Piston. The Detroit Pistons have not made any moves. We'll talk about the possibility of Jeremy Grant being moved, what teams are interested in him, and a player that's being linked to Detroit heavily over the last few days. Will it happen? What do we think about it? We'll talk about all that on today's episode of the Lockdown Pistons Podcast. <laughs> Are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Ben Online. Ben Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Ben Online, where the game starts. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you have not already, head to the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you're watching this on YouTube and haven't hit the subscribe button already, what are you waiting for? You guys are coming back every day for this tremendous content. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It's the best way to support the podcast. I'd really appreciate it. We just crossed over 1,600 subscribers. Just 400 away from 2,000 subscribers is pretty crazy to see how quickly we're we're growing as a fan base over there and across the pa- the podcast. Uh, continue to show everyone that we are the best fan base at the Lockdown Network. Again, head to the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, like I said, man, the cold open. It's Thursday, and this will be posted in the early morning, so hopefully no trade has happened before you guys listen to this. And as of right now, Jeremy Grant has not been moved. The Pistons have not made any trades. Outside the Pistons, the Ben Simmons, James Harden thing still going on. It sounds like that that's kind of like a big domino that a lot of teams are waiting for. We haven't seen many big trades happen after ever since the CJ McCollum trade happened. So we're all kind of like waiting to see what happens now. Uh, and to have on the podcast today to help me talk about all that, you guys will know him if you guys remember. A lot of you guys suggested me to be the replacement for Matt a year ago because you guys heard me on my friend's podcast all the time. You guys recommended him because of that. I'm going to redo the favor and have him on the podcast today. Joe Truck. Joe, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. You, I haven't had you on in a minute. I think it's been like a month and a half, two months since you were back on, last on here. Yeah, you know, uh, fame changes people, and uh, <laughs> you're no exception. You make the big time, and you just leave me behind to suffer behind, you know? You went up the ladder, and you knocked it over after you got to the roof. That's I don't know if that happened. I don't know if I can get on board with that one, but <laughs> happy to have you on, man. We were going to record together like next week, I think it was, but I said, screw it. Let's go ahead and get them on today. Yeah. I got bored. Uh, but all right, let's go ahead and talk about it. So Jeremy Grant, like I said, still Detroit Pistons, at least as of us recording this the night before. Uh, I, I doubt any trade happens overnight. Uh, so he's still a Detroit Pistons. It, rumors and reports say, that the Pistons are looking to get two first-round picks for Jeremy. Um, on the podcast, we've talked about packages I look to try to get him for. Uh, I've had other guests on. We talk about packages they see him possibly getting traded for. Uh, but we really haven't spent a lot of time talking about what the Pistons apparently are looking for uh, and whether that's fair value and accurate and, 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 and cool for them to be looking for. So two first-round picks for Jeremy Grant. Uh, do you think that's something that is – fair value for the Pistons to be asking for? Or do you think that they're overpricing their own guy? Uh, that's the most diplomatic way to say it would probably be to say that's pretty ambitious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be shocked if they got two first round picks for him. It's um, yeah, that, and look they're that type of a thing. It's always, you always have to take it with a grain of salt when you're at the start. You know, well, not at the start, but you're not to the end yet, right? There's a lot of crap that's being thrown against the wall. And the Pistons clearly are going to, if they're going to trade him, they're going to wait to the deadline to make sure that they get the best deal that they can. And um, so they may be going around asking people for two first round picks, but come what, 3 p.m. tomorrow, uh, they may be like, okay, clearly no one bid on that. But, you know, I mean, look, sometimes it only takes one team to make, have a dumb idea, right? I mean, the Pistons have had a couple of trades in the past where they've gotten, like, I mean, you think about when they got Tobias Harris. I that was an sex and it, it ugh, that was a terrible trade for the Magic. Yeah, and you know, so sometimes it's worthwhile to just throw it out there and be like, hey, yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, the Kings just made a really, on its face at least, a really stupid trade when by trading away Tyrese Halliburton. So 
it's never a bad thing to set your market high and see if somebody's willing to meet it. But I can't believe that they would, um, which is what I had heard. And I think you've talked about this on the pod too, that, you know, we both have heard that um, even before Woj reported it the other day, that they were not really getting the interest that they were hoping for in him. Um, so yeah, that kind of backs up that they have a really high asking price and, as of now, no one's likely to meet that, and I wouldn't think that would change. I just don't think Jeremy Grant is – he's not viewed as the caliber of player around the league um, that's worth that kind of draft capital unless it was a team that, you know, is clearly – is really confident that they're going to be awesome this year and next year so that it's like, you know, a pick in the very late 20s, like maybe the Warriors – you know, like that, but the Warriors aren't that interested in Jeremy Grant at this point. So, uh, yeah, I don't think that they're going to get that. But there's nothing wrong with trying, but they're, I don't think it's likely. So I just want to say this to you guys. Joe brought up something right there, and I had a few of you guys tweet this at me, actually, last or uh, yeah, last night when you guys listened to this. Listen, I, this is all I'm going to say to you guys. When I say something and I'm talking, there's just a very my, minute chance that maybe I know something you guys don't. That's all I'm going to say. That's, that's literally all I'm going to say. Cause I, I spent a lot of time arguing with some guys, or some of, maybe even some of you guys about, oh, well, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. I was going to say, I may not know everything. But if, if I'm, I'll say this, if I'm standing pretty firm on something and pretty strongly on something, there is a very minute chance that I, maybe I know something or I've heard something as well. Uh, but anyways, that's, that's me kind of giving you a humble brag and trying to tell you guys that, hey, maybe – Wink, wink, elbow, elbow, nudge, nudge. You guys pay attention a little bit deeper in some things I say. Uh, but either way, I, I, I somewhat agree with you, Joe. I, I don't the, – the two first-round picks I think is a lot for Jeremy Grant. I, I think Jeremy is very viable to a lot of teams. I think a lot of teams have interest in him, but it's the interest level, like how much they're willing to give up, I think is maybe overvalued by Pistons fans right now. Um, two first-round picks is a lot of draft capital for a guy. Uh, and if you just go around comparing it to like other trades that happen, I just don't know if you would put Jeremy Grant on that same type of le- level as some of these other guys. Like I know a lot of people are putting Aaron Gordon, uh, what Aaron Gordon got from the Denver Nuggets in his trade, and they're including R.J. Hampton as like the first round because as of that year he was the first round pick, and then they included another first round pick. So if a team, I, I think that could reasonably happen if if like if there was a team out there that had a first round pick in the late twenties and like a guy they had just drafted that the Pistons were interested in. Maybe that and then a salary filler. Um, but as we'll talk about when we get to the next segment, how many teams are like that out there that have a first-round pick the Pistons want, a salary filler, and a young guy that they're really interested in? I'm not sure there's many out there that that do. So aside from the fact that I just don't know if Jeremy's like really worth all of that, I think he also has questions. A lot of teams have questions as well about how much they're going to have to pay him and the role that he'll accept when, they get, when he gets there. Um, Jeremy 100% is valuable. He's very viable, and it's why he's been talked about so much up to the deadline. But I, I just don't know if he's actually worth two first-round picks. I think that's a lot to be asking for. Uh, if the Pistons get it, great on them. They're doing the right thing way into the trade deadline to get their best offer possible. I wouldn't be shocked if they wait till like 2 o'clock to make this move. But if I had to make a prediction, I just don't know if two first-round picks really is realistic to ask for Jeremy Graham, whether they'll actually get that. Uh, Joe, I'll let you get the last word real quick, and then we'll get to the ad break. Well, just to kind of tack on to what you were saying, um, and in particular with that, you might know some things, okay? So I think that the thing that a lot of fans miss is um, their their view of players often does not line up with what it is league-wide. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's like, Koo, um, okay, <laughs> it's like, Koo, the – you know, you don't necessarily have lots of really in-depth sources necessarily all around the league. Like, you're not going to be breaking news like Woj, but, you know, especially through, like, the lockdown network and such, you talk to lots of people with lots of teams who are, at the very least, really involved with other teams. Even if they're not in the front office, you know, obviously you've got – you could talk to any other lockdown host or whatever. And, um, you know, me personally, I mean, it's sort of a similar thing. Like, I have some sort of small connections, and it's like – just got to tell you, around the league, Jeremy Grant is not viewed as a borderline all-star, which is what a lot of Pistons fans seem to view him as. Uh, after the Sabonis trade, people are like, oh, man, look at that. That's the market. That's not it, man. P- 
people around the league do not view Jeremy Grant in the same light that they view Demonis Sabonis. And to use the Aaron Gordon comparison, to be blunt, I think most people don't view Jeremy Grant as highly as people view Aaron Gordon either. So I know you got to get to an average. So that's all I can I'll say on that for now. But yeah, it's just that around the league, it's just people do not view him as that kind of a player. All right. So when we come back, I'll let you get going a little bit more in depth when when we come back if you want to with that. And then we'll get into some teams, some rumors that we've heard about, you know, teams that are interested, possible packages, teams that seem to be possibly making moves to gear up for a Jeremy Grant trade. We'll talk about all that when we come back. But first, I have to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, BetOnline.net. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march through the playoffs right to the big game in just a couple days. Again, Matthew Stafford guy here. We're going for him. We're rooting for him. If he wins, it's going to feel like the Lions won the Super Bowl to me. That dude was my quarterback growing up. If he wins, I'll lose my mind. We'll probably spend like at least at least a couple minutes on the pockets if he does. I'll be losing my mind. Um, BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football. BetOnline has up to a minute of info on pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live real-time updates of current games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for the 22 season. Make sure you go check out their new updated mobile website as well to check out all the action. BetOnline, where the game starts. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to support the podcast. And like I said earlier, if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't hit it already, what are you doing? You guys are coming here every day for the content. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. It's the best way to support the podcast. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, I know we ran up against the ad break right there. So if there's anything else you wanted to squeeze in there real quick on that last topic we were talking about, I'll give you the floor here. Um, I don't know. There's not necessarily a ton. I guess the, I think one of the main things, um, so like just to lay it out, I, most of my connections. So, cause I covered the Grand Rapids drive of the G league for three years, um, going to games and the table I sat at is the table that scouts sat at basically scouts or opposing front offices guys sat at. So as a result of that, I have, con- I talked to people around the league like that. And the main disconnect, I think between, a lot of Pistons fans and sort of people around the league and teams around the league is of, I think that a lot of Pistons fans view Jeremy Grant as like a really, really, really good defender, but around the league, he's sort of viewed as just okay. And in particular, people are really concerned. If if you talk to anyone in the league about Jeremy Grant, they're always going to bring up the fact that he does not rebound. That's a real concern that a lot of people have for him. And, um, you know, he, he obviously is great length. He's a plus defender, but a lot of people view him as just a plus defender, not a, you know, he's not like a real game changer defensively. He's just, yeah, he makes your defense better and he can be a part of a solid defense. And offensively, there's just the, you know, I'm classic. He's probably have good stats on a bad team and his efficiency has really not been where it was at the start of last year. And in fact, it started to drop off as last season went on and, a lot of just a lot of teams think that he's not they just don't think that he's that caliber of player that he's a fourth or fifth best guy on a good team and yeah so you can disagree with that i would say that he's i think that he's probably a little bit better than um a lot of the people that i've talked to seem to think i think that he really has shown some things in detroit that show that i think he'd be capable of being the third guy in a good team um, but definitely when you look around the league and you consider what his market is, uh, the reason why it seems like it's been a little bit compressed and why they haven't been getting offers that they like, which once again, Woj has reported that too. So that's not just us saying it. Um, a big reason for that is because around the league, teams just do not view him in the same light that the Pistons clearly do and that a lot of Pistons fans do, rightly or wrongly. Yeah, and again, like I mentioned, the content extension coming up that he wants and the role that he's willing to accept probably all plays into that as well, uh, which is why I believe I've said to you guys multiple times that I think this is the best time to move him if they win the offseason. I feel like it gets his value definitely goes down tr- dramatically. Uh, and according to reports, Arn Tellum is in that camp. Uh, it's kind of a little split in the front office. I agree completely with Arn Tellum that you should move Jeremy right now. Uh, you should not have him for the rest of the season. You need to get rid of him now and because this is probably the highest his value will be. Um, we'll see what happens. Maybe the Pistons get someone to, to pony up. Uh, but when the deadline comes around, guys start getting desperate. Uh, they start seeing, okay, this guy may be going over here. Maybe we get an outbid. We really want him. And then who knows? If stuff happens. We see stuff happen all the time with the deadline coming around. So we'll see what happens. 
Uh, but speaking of rumors and interest among teams, so we've heard that multiple teams, obviously we've heard for a while now that da- basically daily the Pistons are getting, are talking to like multiple teams. Uh, but the ones we've really heard about over the last few days, which, by the way, like I've told you guys many times before on here, that doesn't mean one of these teams that you've seen go off into the dark and not say anything or you guys haven't heard of will not trade for him. A lot of times that kind of stuff does happen. But the teams we've heard about a lot lately is Portland, Sacramento, and I saw today from some report, I don't know if it was Jake Fisher or Bleacher Report or or what, but I also saw the Bulls and the Mavs. Um, I'm not going to spend much time with the Mavs because I really don't buy that one. Um, the Bulls, I feel like the Bulls are probably going to be out because I just don't think they're going to budge on the Pat Williams thing. Uh, so if they do that, obviously, I think we all understand that Pat Williams in the first will be what it needs to get it done. Uh, I just don't think that's going to happen. So I think that really leaves two teams, and the two teams I've, I've talked about a lot in this podcast, the Kings and the Trailblazers. And the Trailblazers seem to have moved into a position to where they're trying to size themselves up to get Jeremy Grant. Excuse me. They just moved C.J. McCollum. They're clearing a bunch of cap space. They got a trade exception worth, I believe, $21 million that fits right into, literally exactly into Jeremy Grant's contract. Uh, they got some salary fillers on the team they 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 and they they have that first round pick they just got from uh uh, new orleans as well and it's been reported that they're now heating up trying to go after jeremy uh since joe said it earlier i'll I'll go ahead and say this i've heard some of the same things uh that that's happening Uh, whether it happens or not who knows but i've heard that that the interest is 100 real and they, they they do want to get jeremy uh, and then also there's the Sacramento Kings, and there's a player in the Sacramento Kings we'll talk about later in the podcast, but that's another team who you could see multiple packages being laid out, a first-round pick along with a asset and possibly, I don't know, Rashawn Holmes maybe or uh, a, a different type of salary filler somewhere. I know they don't have Buddy Heald now, which I saw a lot of people trying to fit into a possible trade for Jeremy Graham. But either way, we have those two teams happening. Um, I'll go first here. If I had to pick which team I think happens with, I I know I told you guys a few days ago, the Kings, I've completely shifted over to the Trailblazers. I think the, the interest from the Trailblazers is absolutely real. Uh, I think they're absolutely going for it. I think they're trying to appease Dame very much so and makes complete sense to do so. He's he's your superstar. You've wronged him for a minute. Uh, he feels like he's been wronged. And he wants a guy. He's very. It seems like he's very close with Jeremy. They're boys. Uh, and Jeremy is the quote unquote hot name right now in the market. So if you go and get him, that is going to, uh, set up, uh, Oh, we went out and got the big name. We're trying to get the name for you. Like they're going to have that back them up. So I feel like 100% these moves that Portland is doing 100% is to size them up for Jeremy Grant, try to gain a position to get him. If it's two first round picks that need to get it done, they're going to have to swing some other move to possibly get a gun. But I think the Pistons will end up being the team that backs off the two first round picks, not team end up poning up for two first round picks uh but my opinion i i think portland's probably the team that goes with this i think they end up getting them uh, i wouldn't be surprised if he goes to sacramento or some other random team uh but i, I think right now I, i'm I, i'm going to go ahead and go with portland i think the interest is 100 real and everything's just lining up too perfectly for it to be for nothing yeah i mean the one concern with portland is so with the trade today uh, where they took back Joe Ingles and they gave up uh, um, Nikeel. I don't even know for sure if that's Nikeel Alexander right. Walker. Yeah, but NAW. Um, that does seem to be, which the reports have been pretty widely put out that Dame is probably done for the season. Uh, so it makes sense. But that does give me a little bit of pause because the combination of reports that Damian Lillard is supposedly done for the season. And then you trade for a guy in Joe Ingles, who's for sure not playing the rest of the season. Uh, that makes me think that they might be making a decision as a team to just totally bottom out for the rest of this year. Then they'll reload this summer. And so I feel like they're not going to have a lot of urgency to trade for him right now. Uh, unless, which there are some reports that Damian Lillard himself is really putting pressure on them to just go get him. Uh, which, you know, that could be and that could push them over the edge to want to really go get him. But that is the one thing. As of now, it does make more sense that Portland is the team that would want him um, in the long term because they said they're trying to retool around Jeremy around Jeremy Grant, around Damian Lillard, and Damian Lillard supposedly really likes Jeremy Grant. They've got some assets that nothing that really blows you away, but they do have some things that they could give Detroit. 
Um, but I would guess that they have a little bit less urgency because of the fact that it looks like they're setting themselves up to just totally bottom out for the rest of the season and then retool and come back next year, which that might be if Jeremy Grant doesn't get traded at the deadline, then I would say definitely Portland is where he's going to end up this summer. Uh, but just because of that, it also, you know, with the Kings, <laughs> trading Halliburton, obviously a really unpopular move. And so if they want to sort of win back their fans, um, they really need to make sure they make it this year. Uh, they need to do something. So I feel like there's a lot more pressure on them to try and um, get themselves into the playoffs this year and have a really strong finish because uh, especially an organization like the Kings that has been so bad for so long, uh, when you had the Locked on Kings host here, you guys talked about what franchise has it worse. And he was just talking about how, you know, this franchise just drives me to drink. Um, I'm planning <laughs> on listening to one of his uh, latest podcasts at work tomorrow. I haven't listened to it yet. Just in reaction <laughs> to the Albert trade. I can't wait to hear that. But uh, um, it just, it seems like they are in a situation where they really need to make sure, because I mean, that's the type of move that, if things go south the rest of the season and Halbert really thrives in Indiana, I mean, that will genuinely be a breaking point for a lot of their fans. And they know that. And so they really have a lot of impetus to go the extra mile. And so I guess here's maybe the better way to put it is it's like we talked about. I don't think that any team is going to meet the Pistons demands for a trade because around the league, I think that teams do not view Jeremy Grant as being worth that much. What could change that is if a team says, we know he's not worth that much, but we're backed into a corner here, so we need to do this. And I think that the odds of the Kings making that move are higher than the odds of Portland making that move, even aside from the simple fact that I think we all kind of agree that the Kings are not the brightest front office in the league. Uh, <laughs> um, even if we take that aside, it makes a lot more sense that the Kings would be in sort of desperation mode uh, to really want to go through with that. And the other thing that is makes that line up is that both Bagley and Rashawn Holmes are now guys that are fairly redundant with the arrival of Sabonis and guys that makes perfect sense as being sort of the starting point of a trade for the Pistons. Whereas with the Trailblazers, I don't think they want to give up Anthony Cinnamons. And other than him, especially with NAW now traded away, it's not clear what the starting point for them there is that's really going to make the Pistons super interested. So, yeah, I, it makes more sense for Portland. Like, if I were in charge of one of those two teams, I would be more interested in it if I was Portland than if I was the Kings. But given the situations that have sort of come up and the way that this has gone, I do think that the Kings still absolutely would be very much in play. I wouldn't say that the Blazers are more likely than the Kings. And I think that's a great way to segue into our next topic. And it's obviously going to be about the Kings. And I'll just go ahead and spoil it for you guys. Marvin Bagley, whose father has been liking some Detroit Pistons tweets. Uh, and he's been linked to the Pistons this entire week. Even if you go back a few months ago, he was linked to them as the Pistons being interested in them. And I feel like it's really starting to heat up over the last few days. So we'll talk about are the Pistons going to get Marvin Bagley? What kind of deal could be had for Marvin Bagley? And will could he possibly be involved in a bigger trade that involves Jeremy Grant? We'll talk about that when we come back. But first, I have to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible to, for your local chain auto parts store, to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless and seemingly intimidating questioning? Is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? I don't know anything about cars. I don't know if it's an EX or X. I don't, I don't know nothing about cars. Or wait, while the person behind the counter orders the parts for their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump is $353 from a chain store, $216 from Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a family business serving do it yourselves for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you could possibly need. Brake parts, tail lamps motor oil, even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find a solution to your auto part needs. Go to auto, rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com. 
So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to support the podcast. I would really appreciate it. Uh, but to wrap up the podcast, Joe, we were just talking about the Kings. You've made a really compelling argument for the Kings being the team that ends up getting uh, Jeremy Grant and why they should they, they could possibly be in a position with their backs up against the wall to have to try to do this. Um, there's a guy on the team on the Sacramento Kings that has been linked to the Piston for a while now. It seems like he's the ma- – he, if you had to ask everybody, you ask 100 people in the NBA community who's the most guaranteed player to get traded, I think a lot of them would say Marvin Bagley. Uh, he seems to be the most – likely one to be moved no matter what. Uh, and the Pistons have been linked to him a lot over the last – heck, even going into last year, there was a rumor that they offered Bagley for Sadiq Bey, which looking at it now, that, that was pretty crazy to offer. But either way, the Pistons have been linked to Bagley for a while now. Uh, and since I went first last segment, I'll let you go first here. Two questions. Uh, you can go ahead and take your time with both. Uh, first one. Do you think the Pistons get Marvin Bagley? If you had to bet your money, do you think they get him? And two, is it part of a separate deal, like a second-round pick, Josh Jackson, second-round pick, Lyle, second-round pick, Hamadou Diaz, something like that? Or do you think it's a part of a bigger deal that ends up getting them Jeremy Grant, maybe Bagley, like you mentioned, Holmes, and a first-round pick? Do you think that happens right there? Which, which, Where do you think this happens if Bagley – if the answer to my first question is yes, how do you think this happens? Um – it's hard to say that I do think they will just because, you know, as much as we talk about how crazy all the trades are in the, at the end of the day, most trade ideas don't end up actually happening. Uh, you know, I mean, we can all think of every single off season, every single deadline, we sort of latch on to, Oh man, this is the trade that should happen. This is the trade that should happen. This is the guy that should happen. And then it doesn't happen. Um, so, and the other thing is that I think Bagley is a guy that uh, the Pistons are not the only team that's interested in. Uh, so I wouldn't be shocked if some other team swooped in and took him. That said, I do think Marvin Bagley is very likely to get traded, and it makes the most sense for the Pistons. So I guess I would say probably. I think that the the odds are pretty good. I think the Pistons are the most likely team for him to be traded to. Maybe that's a better way to put it. And, um, you know, what would it take? Once again, because of the way that some of the rest of the landscape is moving, I think that I would lean towards it being part of a Jeremy Grant deal because it does seem like, um, kind of like you mentioned before, uh, the Jeremy Grant market has narrowed a bit. Whereas, you know, a few weeks ago, there were any number of playoff teams that could have been interested in him. And um, now a combination of that, a few teams have already made deals like New Orleans was a team that was very, very open about they wanted to improve their roster for this year. And so and they weren't necessarily linked to Jeremy Grant a whole bunch, but they could have been an option to be like, oh, they make sense. They want to get better. Jeremy Grant makes them better. They made their trade, right? And um, so it does seem like the market is sort of narrowed, which makes me think that it makes more sense for it to be that because it makes sense for the Kings to want Jeremy Grant. And obviously it makes sense for the Pistons to want to get Marvin Bagley. So my guess would be that it would be part of a bigger deal. And uh, I would kind of think that the Kings would want, um, in addition, uh, one of either Lyles or Kelly Olenek. Um, Olenek has just looked so bad since he came back from injury that they might not even want him. Um, but, you know, because Trey Lyles, as much as I really hate watching Trey Lyles play basketball, like there's not a lot of guys that I acknowledge have some use and I just still can't stand watching them. Um, but he does have use for a good enough team. You know, he can shoot. He's not a total disaster on defense. So he's a guy who can play, you know, 10, 15 minutes for a decent team and make it work. Uh, Not that he'd be like a centerpiece or anything, but he's a guy that a team like the Kings could look at and go, oh, it's nice. We can get Trey Lyles too. So I guess something along the lines of um, Grant and Lyles um, for some sort of a Holmes-Bagley picks combination. And for what it's worth, I think that that would be a great trade for the Pistons. I would be thrilled with that sort of a return. Um, I'm really, really high on Marvin Bagley. Uh, He's a guy in particular because when you watch him, he's a guy that to me, he cares. Uh, You know, there's there's some guys that it's clear that they just don't have the sort of drive or effort to really make it work. At the very least, Marvin Bagley very clearly wants this to work. He wants to make it in the league. He's not just like, well, I'm a big guy and I got paid and whatever. 
he tries hard. And when you are that kind of an athlete and that type of talent and you try hard, I just have to be behind you. And the other thing to consider with Marvin Bagley is when you look at his per 36 stats, they're pretty absurd. I mean, as for his career, his per 36 is 20 and 10. You know, like I know that some of the eye test stuff doesn't match up with the production and he gets hurt a lot, but he is exactly the sort of guy that the Pistons should be taking a shot on, especially because he's a player that he fits exactly what they need, a really athletic big man. It's so obvious that they are lacking in athletic big men. You know, I'm you talk about this all the time, so we don't need to be mean to Isaiah Stewart. We both like Isaiah Stewart. He just has some obvious flaws. And so you have an opportunity to add a guy who is a really high potential player still, and he fills exactly the role that you need. Um, so I just I think that would be a really great trade. Some combination of Grant for uh, Bagley and picks. And then also if you get Rashawn Holmes, that'd be nice too. Uh, it'd be a little bit redundant, and that also would put you in a little bit of an awkward spot with Isaiah Stewart's future as well. But, I mean, the reality is, to be blunt, I don't think Isaiah Stewart is good enough to be that worried about that, just to be honest. I mean, he's a guy that we're happy to have on the team. If he stays in a major role going forward, that's not the end of the world. He may develop into something better, but he certainly is not good enough that you're not looking at other opportunities just because it's like, well, we've got Isaiah Stewart, so we don't need to add any centers. And yeah, so I think that that's probably the most likely way that this ends up happening. And I think that that'd be a great trade for the Pistons. I'm all behind it. I'm completely with you. I would absolutely love that trade. I know there's a lot of people out there apparently that would not like that package. Uh, Bagley and picks. To be honest with you, I'm going to keep it a buck with you, Joe. I'm going to upset a lot of Pistons fans here. And it is what it is. I don't care. I'm going to go out here and say I've been holding this in. I'm going to just put put it on blast. I would actually take I would simply just take Bagley and picks. And obviously I think they would have to I think they have to do filler, uh, some kind of filler to make the salaries work. Um, but to be honest with you, I wouldn't even need Holmes. If they refuse to put Holmes in there, I would simply just take Bagley and picks. Like I, I think that's better than what Portland can give you. Uh, I'm not really I don't I'm gonna keep it a buck. I don't know who Keon Johnson is. Never heard of him before in my life. So I mean he may actually be a decent prospect. Never heard of him before in my life. The first round pick I, it's it's fine, but I'd much rather have a Kings first round pick, um, and it'd probably be top something protected. I'd want it to be it had to be at least like top eight protected for me to be cool with it. Top ten and top like twelve ish. It's starting to get a little hard, um, but if they offered Bagley in multiple picks, I'm taking that. Like it's just it's just happening. So I, I'm cool with that. Uh, I but I will say this: I disagree. I think that I I, I end up thinking that they're going to get. Marvin Bagley. I do think they're going to get Marvin Bagley, first of all, but I think that's not going to be a part of the Jeremy Grant trade. I don't think that the Pistons end up pulling their trigger on that. Um, I think they go somewhere else with that unless the Kings, like you say, overpay because they're backed into this corner that they have to convince the fans we didn't just trade Tigers Halburn for nothing and we're not a full franchise. We're trying to make the playoffs, whatever. If they overpay to get Jeremy Grant, makes sense. Fair enough. Then obviously I'd do it. Uh, but then I, I'd, but I just also question whether they'll actually do that or not. For Jeremy Grant. So I, I think the Pistons will probably end up getting Marvin Bagley, but for like Josh Jackson, Hamadou Diallo, Trey Lyles or something, and a second round pick. I think that's what will happen. Uh, that, that's my prediction with Marvin Bagley. Though I, I said on Twitter earlier, I do mean this. I actually would bet money that Marvin Bagley is a Detroit Piston after the deadline. Like that's how confident I think it's going to happen. Uh, if yeah. it doesn't happen, this is not one of those things where you guys can sit here, all you listeners out there. It's not one of those things that you can tell me to shave my beard if it doesn't happen or put clown makeup on or the one chip chat. That's no, we're not doing that. Every time I make a prediction, I have to be wrong. We're not, we're not doing that. Um, but I, I, that's, I am very confident in saying that I think Marvin Bagley will be a piston after the deadline. Um, is there anything else you want to say real quick before I wrap up the podcast? Um, I, I do agree with the idea that I think that if the Kings are, it does sound like the Pistons don't want to give up Jeremy Grant just to trade him. They want to get value for him. Exactly how far down they're willing to let their price go is the question. Um, but I do think that if the Kings are not willing to divvy up to what the Pistons want for Jeremy Grant, I do think that the Pistons will just make a move. One thing that I'm quite curious, just because you tossed him in there, how comfortable are you with trading Hamadou Diallo? Because Very there's a lot of Pistons fans that that have declared him officially part of the core. So I'm just curious. What do you think about that? 
All right, Joe. So you're trying to get me in trouble on here, but that's fine. We'll we'll go ahead and do it, and then I, I we're gonna wrap the podcast up after that because Joe is gonna try to get me in more trouble if I let him keep talking. Uh, listen, I'm gonna say this one more time for all you guys. You guys can get mad at me as much as you want. I don't care. There is only one untouchable player on this damn team, and his name is Cade Cunningham. I don't care what. I don't care if it's the Deep Bay, Jeremy Grant, Isaiah Stewart. You guys know I love Killian Hayes. I'm a big believer in him eventually becoming the player I think he can be. He damn sure is an untouchable. Like Frank Jackson, Diallo. Like there's not a single person on this team that is untradeable. And Hamadou Diallo, if his value actually is higher right now because of how he's played over the last two months, if you think you can capitalize on that value, hell yes. Ship him out. I'd do that for any player on the squad. If Frank Jackson's value happens to be higher right now, ship him out. Pistons fans, this is what we need to comprehend here. And th- I'm going to end it right here because now Joe's going to get me ranting. Because this is actually getting on my nerves. This is this is something that's happened that's actually getting on my nerves. Here, yo, 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 before you cut it off, though, okay? <laughs> because you toss it out there. Let's just say theoretically, I think that the salaries wouldn't quite match up. Would you trade Hamadou Diallo for Marvin Bagley straight up? Correct, yes. You would do that? Yes. I actually think the Kings would probably ask for a second-round pick, and even in that case, I'd say yes. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Interesting. You're trying. You're trying to spin something up. You're, you're trying. No, you're trying I'm, to stir some I stuff genuinely was curious because I've seen some people who are kind of wild, and, and I'm going to be honest. This is another one where uh, you know you talk to people around the league. It's like Pistons fans declaring Hamadou Diallo part of the core is. I there is literally a scout I know who I talked to, who um, literally was texting me jokes about that because um, some pe- he saw some people on Twitter declaring Hamadou Diallo part of the Pistons' core. And he literally was making fun of me because of how far the Pistons have fallen, that Hamadou yeah. Diallo is now part of the core. He's like, you guys used to win championships, and now Hamadou Diallo is your savior. You got Hamadou Diallo making you excited because he can hit a layup. Hamadou well, Diallo, he was giving me, he was roasting me. So, yeah, I was just curious what you thought about it. That's all. I'm not trying to get you in trouble. You know, my just... <laughs> We're just trying to generate content for the machine. There you go. So now you can make like three episodes about this, you know? Fair enough. Fair enough. People, I'll say this. In your next question and answer, people will just be roasting you about how you hate Hamadou <laughs> Diallo. Next I'll, time I'll, Hamadou I'll... Diallo has a good game, people just be tweeting at you. See, oh, see I'm one thing. of them. I'm making fun of you. See, this is the thing. This is the, That's why I hate this so much. Because as soon as you say a, tra- a player is tradable if his value is high, they immediately think that you hate the player and that you think he sucks or yeah. something. No, that's just that's just not what it is. It's a complete opposite. I ha- has Hamadou Diallo been fine? Yeah, I think he's been fine. I think he's actually been pretty good over the last like two months. Has Frank Jackson been good? Yeah, I think he's been good over the last two months. I actually I've said on the podcast before that I think Frank Jackson probably if you look at wh- how he got him, I think value for value, I think he was probably one of the best pickups, if not the best pickup Troy Rivers got. He got him off a. Tr- two-way contract, and he turned into, it looks like, a legitimate rotational player. I think that's a really good find. But again, neither of those guys are, like, big enough parts of, of like, the future to where you should be like, oh, we're just not getting rid of these guys. Like, like, come on, bro. Come on. We got Kay Cunningham now. We building for a championship. We not building for, like, come on, bro. Especially Howry. Like, (laughs) Hamadou Diallo doesn't shoot. And also because he took the qualifying offer, he's an unrestricted free agent. Yes, there. I would actually go so far as to say the Pistons absolutely should be actively shopping him. There's no reason he should be on the team after the deadline. Fair enough. So we'll wrap the podcast <laughs> up with this right here. Final question. Yeah, simple yes or no, Joe. All right. Is Jeremy Grant on the team past the deadline? God, I hope not. No, you're not allowed to do that. You're not. Allowed no, to, you're not no. allowed to hope. Jeremy you're Grant going to yep. get traded. Okay, fair enough. I agree as well. I think he'll be traded. Uh, most be people listen to this, they'll already know how much of a fool we are. <laughs> Little did we you know, know. <laughs> instead of this, instead of getting traded, Troy Weaver's going to come out and announce that they've signed him to an extension. Five <laughs> years, $120 million. It would be so a very got to get his voice paid. What a, what a long con, man. Did the whole <laughs> thing, became GM just to get his boys paid. Hamadou Diallo and Jeremy Grant. Future of the Detroit Pistons. <laughs> Gonna re-sign Hami to like a five-year, hundred million dollar deal too. Thank you, Joe, for coming up, on, man. You know, like if I got to be GM of the Pistons, I'd sign you to a contract. You know, like who cares? Appreciate it. Appreciate it. You, you guys. 
thanks Joe for coming on, man. It's always fun with Joe, man. He he, he always finds a way to, to to get some laughs out of me, man. You feel me? Joe, let them know where they can find find you on Twitter. And I believe you're writing at your 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 own website still, right? Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter at Joe underscore truck. Um, I have a Substack. You can find me on Substack. It's just Joe Truck at Substack. And I also write at Piston Powered. Um, and you can also read anything that I put on my Substack. I also put on the Piston subreddit. So you can read me there. And yeah, and also follow Ku on Twitter too, at Kuka Hill NBA. He's the man. You, man. He's the best Twitter follow. He'll occasionally <laughs> tweet out cryptic Drake lyrics, and you have to decide if it's <laughs> actually meaning anything. Like, so are you just are you just singing in the car while delivering some food somewhere, or <laughs> are you actually trying to say something with this? Like, you never know for sure if he's subtweeting someone or not. And he gets in fights with Dal in Detroit, which we all appreciate. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I'll, 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 some boys. I'll, I'll end the podcast. I'll end the podcast with this. I know so much shit that I cannot expose. I keep it inside and I laugh on my own. That's all I'm going to (laughs) say. Thank you, Joe, for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Make sure you guys go follow him and make sure you guys also make Lockdown Bets your second listen of every day, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Again, thank you, Joe, for coming on, man. I had a lot of fun. Make sure you guys go follow him on Twitter at Joe Truck. Thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free to available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button over at the YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it. I, I hope we didn't sound stupid by the time you guys listen to this. I hope like some big trade doesn't happen. Not all of this is outdated by the time you and listen. Cool, let's, let's be honest, Koo. A trade doesn't need to happen for you to sound stupid. Fair enough. Fair enough. Like, I, why I, people I guess listen to the show? They're like, I got to listen to this idiot. Make me enough, feel fair. smart. Whatever gets the listens, I'll take it. But we'll see what happens, man. 3 p.m. Eastern time. Hopefully something happens. If nothing happens, I think we'll all be miserable. Something has to happen. So we'll see what happens. I'll definitely be there to update you guys as soon as it happens, hopefully with the Locked On Now or I'll maybe appear on the NBA trade deadline show from Locked On Network. So if something happens, make sure you guys tune in for me uh, somewhere on there. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Peace out, everybody, and go Pistons.